Hey everybody, so today we are going to do yet another quick take. Let's define what is information architecture. Information architecture can be defined as adding structure to raw data so that you either retain or can extract meaning and context from that data for human consumption. Interesting thing about information architecture is as an industry, we have grown. We understand that there's a lot of things that mean information architecture. You can be a UX designer. You can be, you know, an app provider. You can be designing APIs. You can be doing machine learning. You can be a data scientist, a data engineer, a taxonomist, an ontologist. All of these things go into information architecture. So we're all trying to add meaning or extract meaning from information. And the end result is so that people can do things more efficiently and people can find value in something. There are five general types that I would say are information architecture. So the first is that the underpinnings of how do you actually create a schema and how do you organize the information in your databases or in your full text so that you can do something with it. And that can be serving up to a user interface or it could be doing any kind of machine learning. So that's number one. Number two is the actual interface, the waypoints, so to speak, that are on buttons and any of the filters. Go and look at any of my metadata challenges. That's a whole playlist of those down below. Basically, all of those are talking about different waypoints or different labels and organization on a screen of the data so that people can find meaning in it and know what to do with it. Then there's something that I think is, is very typical of information architecture, and that is how do you navigate? How do you get from one page to another? How do you get from shopping cart to payment screen? How do you get from shipping label to on the truck if you're doing some kind of supply chain? These are pieces of information. And while we are doing them in the physical world, Oftentimes you have to do something that a lot of people are now calling digital twins, which is how do you replicate this in the digital world so that you can understand what's going on and replicate risks and assess that and try to figure out what is going to be more efficient. The next two are near and dear to my heart, and that is search and control vocabulary. So search, how do you structure your algorithms? How do you think about relevancy? What makes sense to your end user so they can find something effectively? And going along with that, how do you index it? And what are you indexing it with? Are you using a taxonomy? Are you using something like a knowledge graph to surface information for somebody? All of those things are information architecture. But here's the thing. Don't think about that end result quite yet. Information architecture is actually more about that thought process in understanding how is a user going to interpret this data? What in this data is the most important or is the highest priority to serve up to them first? If I am planning a pathway through a park, if I have my end user in mind, which maybe is a new mother and a stroller, probably shouldn't put a lot of twists and turns into that pathway, not because she can't go down the pathway with a stroller that way, but because it's not efficient and she's a new mom. She probably just wants to get where she's going very quickly. So that's why sometimes you see people cutting through the grass when a walkway wasn't planned well, because ultimately people just want to get to the answer that they need. They want to get to that thing that they're looking for quickly and efficiently. Trying to find a way to help them to that answer and that goal that's what information architecture is all about. It's not necessarily about building the pathway. It's about the journey getting to the design of building the pathway. So if you are not aware of it, the end of February 2021 is World Information Architecture Day. Not this weekend. And so the theme for this year is curiosity. And I thought, what kind of video could I do that would inspire curiosity for information architecture? So I have a special treat for you. I actually teamed up with the good folks at List It or Fix It, and we're gonna do a little bit of a house makeover theme to what kind of information architecture do you have and 
What kind of house would it build? What are some of the pros and considerations of each type of information architecture build process? I also have created a personality test to help you decide which one of the five information architectures are you building with. And truth is, it's more of a fun kind of exercise, but the details that I have in each of these different types of architecture are very much real. So have some fun with that. Link in the description below if you want to go and check it out. What's that? Oh, our friends over at Fix It or List It are calling in and they're saying that they are ready to go and show us what kind of information architecture they are encountering in their new tiny house renovation. So why don't we go check it out? So today on Fix It or List It, we are going to be looking at this mini house or what could be a mini house. We're going to be looking at what kind of architecture it is. Looks like this probably started out life as a new build, but seeing some better days. So let's go check it out. Seems like pretty solid structure. All right, so we built this into a tiny house. We've got some good good bones. This is good. This is what happens when you start with a new structure. Look, it's, it's probably made from a template. Now, this is all in the physical world. We're not in the clouds, but they probably had a really good team putting this together. I mean, you can see there's even some categorization going on with this architecture. That's good. Otherwise, look at this. I mean, this does not have a lot of structure but look at that look at this this is I mean this is what data hoarding is all about this this is there's no organization here and if we had to make this into a tiny house there is definitely enough room for that now we'd have to put in some plumbing over here but you know there's still lighting that's good electricity got some of that but Definitely got to put some plumbing in. That's a modern thing. I don't know how we're going to fit that into the old structure that we've got going on here because this is definitely an older structure. Mm -hmm. Let's go look at the foundations. All right, let's look at this foundation. It actually looks pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, look at this. I mean, they've got a mesh. Maybe they're using a data mesh. That's pretty slick. And, I mean... Looks like they've got some some good access, which is pretty good. I mean, that's pretty important. If you're trying to work with an older structure that you can actually deal with the data. You can see that you've got some security there. That's pretty good. All right, but here's the test. We need to go and see, can our data, the size, the volume of our data fit? Yeah, looks like it's big enough. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. We might have to add some storage later on. It's going to be a lot of work that we're going to need to do to get this older structure into a new tiny house with modern architecture. All right, so demo. This is part of integrating new technology into your older structure. Let's go. Now, while I work on my information architecture, let's go find out what kind of information architecture your house is built on. And don't forget to go into the description and check out the quiz so that you can find out what kind of house your information architecture is building out of, as well as the pros and considerations based on that architecture. So go check that out. I sincerely hope that Either the quiz or this fun video has inspired you to learn more about information architecture, perhaps to really understand a little bit better or to reevaluate what kind of information architecture you are currently using and how you can make it more effective. How can you build on it if you are dealing with an older structure or if you are building a futuristic? do you need to know to build it out effectively so it really can be that towering 
monolithic glass structure that you might be trying to build. And so with that, catch you next time.